one of the most dangerous characters in history, killed millions of people. The foundations of a great empire, he was afraid of the East and the West. If you like historical stories, please like and subscribe to my channel to watch new videos. Hulagu Khan was born on October 15, 1218, to Talui and Sargantani Beki. Sargantani was a Karaite princess who controlled much of the Mongol politics. She wished to see all her sons become Mongol leaders. She was a Christian who belonged to the, quote, Church of the East, unquote, Nestorianism. Talui was one of Genghis Khan's sons. Hulagu was also the brother of Eric Boki, Mangu, and Kublai Khan. An assembly held in 1251 at the time of Mangu Khan's ascension to the throne stated that Hulagu was to conquer Western Asia by crushing the militant Ismailis, or the quote-unquote assassins of Alamut in north-central Iran. Mangu was one of the great Khans of the Mongols. In 1255, Mangu officially appointed Hulagu to establish Mongol power in Islamic areas. Hulagu's plan was to crush the Lurs, a community of southern Iran, destroy the Hashashin sect, defeat the Abbasid Salafate in Baghdad, crush the Ayyubid dynasty in Damascus, and overpower the Mamluk Sultanate in Egypt. Soon, Hulagu set out with the largest army ever consolidated in the Mongol Empire. In 1256, Hulagu conquered the fortress of the Assassins, a militant Islamic sect. The Siege of Baghdad, 1258 Hulagu Khan and his general, Guo Khan, led their forces to Baghdad in November 1257. Hulagu asked Baghdad to surrender. However, the Caliph, al Mastasim refused to do so and stated that the Mongols would face the wrath of God if they attacked him. Following this, Hilagu's army attacked the city. The Caliph's army was crushed on January 17, 1258, and Hilagu reached the walls of Baghdad by January 22. Baghdad was forced to surrender on February 10 that year. Within 10 days, the Caliph was executed. Legend has it that the Caliph was left to starve to death inside a tower full of gold and silver. However, this appears to be an exaggeration and is believed by historians that the Caliph was probably rolled in a carpet and trampled or beaten to death, so as not to shed royal blood, according to the Mongol custom of executing their own princes. After this, the Mongols led a massacre for about a week. It is known as one of the most horrific events in Islam's history. Al Mustansir of the Abbasid dynasty survived the massacre and escaped to Egypt. He was given refuge by the Mamluk Sultan there. The Conquest of Syria, 1260 After conquering Baghdad, Hilagu focused on Azerbaijan, which was slated to be the center of the Ilkhanid dynasty. By then, his army had been joined by the Christian vassals of the region, such as the forces of Cilician Armenia under Hetium I and the Franks of the Bohemod VI of Antioch. By the autumn of 1259, Hilagu and his combined army marched toward Syria, which was then ruled by the Ayyubid dynasty. Aleppo was besieged soon after. Damascus surrendered easily on March 1, 1260, after Christian general Kitbuka led an attack. In 1260, the last Ayyubid ruler, al Nasser Yusuf, was executed by Hilagu. With Baghdad and Damascus gone, the Egyptian Mamluks in Cairo became the power center of the Islamic world. By the summers of 1260, the Mongols had marched into Gaza, situated on the frontier with Egypt. However, Hilagu soon received the news of Mangu's death in China and thus returned to Karakorum to decide on the succession. Hulagu had left behind only 10,000 Mongol horsemen in Syria under the leadership of Kitbuka to fight in the battle. The Battle of Ain Jalut, 1260 The Mamluks, who ruled over the region, seized the opportunity to attack the weak Mongol army. 
The Crusaders and the Mamluks both viewed the Mongol army as a threat, but could not come to an agreement with regard to uniting their forces against the Mongols. Instead, the Crusaders allowed the Egyptian forces to march towards the north through their territory and then resupply near the power base of Acre. The Mamluks then attacked the remaining part of the Mongol army in Galilee, in what was now known as the Battle of Ain Jalut. On September 3rd, 1260, the Mongol army was defeated badly. Following this, Kitbuka was executed. The Mongols could not reclaim Ain Jalut, and for the next few centuries, the Mongols repeatedly invaded Syria but could not retain their lands for more than a few months. The Tigris River remained the border of the Mongol Empire for the rest of Hulagu's reign. Later Campaigns By 1262, Hilagu returned to his region after his brother Kublai Khan was named the next Great Khan. Between 1262 and 1262, Hulagu faced conflicts in the Caucasus area. His cousin and Batu Khan's brother, Burka, was the ruler of the Golden Horde, had joined Hulagu's enemies, the Mamluks of Egypt. Burka was a Muslim convert and wished to avenge the siege of Baghdad. Hulagu's forces won initially, marching across the Tarek into Berkey's region. However, they faced heavy losses. Many of his soldiers drowned in the river as the thin ice gave way under the weight of their horses. In 1263, Hilagu was crushed in his attempted invasion north of the Caucasus. This was the first civil war between the Mongols and spelled the end of the unified empire. Apart from the revolts in Mosul and Fars, this was also one of Hulagu's final campaigns. Hilagu wished to build an alliance with France against the Muslims. However, the letter had mentioned Hilagu's plan to take over Jerusalem for the benefit of the Pope and had requested Louis IX to send him a fleet against Egypt. Nevertheless, Hilagu's dream to form an alliance with Europe remained unfulfilled. Hilagu Khan died on February 8, 1265. He was buried on a large rock situated about a thousand feet above the Shahai Island in Lake Ermia. His funeral reportedly featured the ritual of human sacrifice and involved the burial of many young women who would serve him in the afterlife. His son, Abakwa, ascended to the throne after his death. Hilagu founded the Il Khanid dynasty and thus paved the way for the Safadid dynasty which led to the formation of Iran. His campaigns made Iran open to European and Chinese influences. <laughs>